Um, all right. So let's do this fucking snail school, everybody. Welcome to snail school with me, Voltaic Core, and C's over there too. And you guys are going to fucking learn something today. And this is all about how Big O explains the 2008 financial crisis. See, I did some research and I was at first going to just talk about the housing market crash, but this has everything to do, like Big O can explain everything, the anime Big O can explain everything about the 2008 financial crisis that basically makes start, sense to me. It's it's fucking crazy. Like I said, this is Big O is not about a, this financial crisis. It's about a fucking Big, Big O just caused it. Yeah, right. But um, but like I said, you can use Big O as a tool to understand the financial crisis. Anyway, let's get into it. I'm going to put some music on in the background. Uh, I have this whole thing set up pretty well. And we're going to do this. All right, cool. That, uh, that music actually seems a little bit too loud, actually, now that I'm looking at it. Move around. Okay, cool. So, let me get my notes up. And see, and, and anyone else that you guys can talk and add things uh, as you want to go. And uh, yeah. So let me explain Big O for everyone who hasn't seen it. Uh, what we finna learn today. We're finna learn ec economics through anime. Um, so Big O is a story about giant mech robots. Um, you're telling uh, it wrong. What's that? You're telling it wrong. Okay, tell, then you tell it for this part. This is a story all about <laughs> how giant mech robots came to town. It's about, it's about these giant mechs. Uh, I don't know anything about anime. Perfect. You don't need to know dick. All that you need to know is... Let me pull up what Big O is. Um, actually, I have oh. images. Only true otakus watch Big O. Only true... No, no they don't, because I watch it. Exactly. Or I, I, I did watch it. All right, so... <laughs> Because I, mean, I watch it. I mean, I, I did. Yeah. Once. It was a so, phase in college. Big O is all about this giant robot. His name is Big O. And he's badass as shit, um, as you guys can see. And uh, he's piloted by this guy, Roger Smith. And they live in a town called Paradigm City. Paradigm City has lost its memories uh, of... 40 year, of what happened 40 years ago and anything previous to that moment right there. Um, Taking me down to the paradigm city where Yeah. The so, with that being said, um, let me switch back this now. So, so yeah, so you have, you have Roger Smith. He's a really cool fucking dude. Um, he's a negotiator. Where basically, all he does is he gets hired. He's a freelance negotiator. He gets hired to um, talk and, and negotiate deals between people. You know what I'm saying? So like if a criminal has kidnapped somebody, which is basically how the first episode starts, if a criminal has kidnapped a, a girl, uh, he'll go as a neutral party who can exchange goods and services uh, to to seal the deal, which never made any sense because he's being hired by one party. So he's not neutral. He's, he's being hired on behalf of one of the parties. You know what I'm saying? So like he yeah. has a... He has a, uh, a employer. Yeah. So he, he has, so he's a bias. Right. Exactly. So it's not like he's, he always talks about how he's a neutral figure, but he's not, it's, it's impossible. So we're going to try to keep it short about what big O's is about. Uh, um, gay part two, he says, Brandon, that's hilarious. Um, so anyway, but basically it's all about a bunch of fucking robots come out of nowhere. They're called mega deuces which has not aged well. That name is not very good anymore. <laughs> I really, really thought you were going to say Mega Dudes. No, nope, Mega Deuce. Uh, so. <laughs> oh, I took one of those earlier. <laughs> so like I said, the names have not aged very well. Um, anyway, and the whole, and everybody lives in domes because. It's they, the future. Uh, yeah, they never really talk too much about it. Like they can, people out, people live outside the domes and those are like the really poor, like, you know, impoverished lower class citizens of Paradigm mm -hmm. City. But Paradigm City is based, is, is made up of domes, which you can travel through, travel between, and you can even travel outside of it. You can live outside the domes, you can breathe outside the domes. It's a wasteland, but. Is it a dimmodome? It's a, it's like a dimmodome. Doug Dimmodome, one of the Dimsdale Dimmodome, Dum Dig and Dig and Dum, da 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 da. I'm branching out. I'm Doug Dimmodale. Doug Dimmodale. 
I'm Doug's Dim Dale. Dim 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 so anyway, um, so whatever. So so that's basically Big O. Um, it's it's there's a, a huge class divide between those living inside the domes and those living outside the domes. Um, most people at Paradigm City don't care about getting their memories back um, about what's been going on, except for a couple people. Um, some of the, the key players you have Roger Smith, as I as I just talked about. You have Angel, the um, alien from American Dad. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I like wine and negotiating. Um, you have Angel, who she uh, is. A, she's she always talks about herself. Like she, whenever you meet her, she's pretending to be somebody else, and she's kind of undercover, trying to get something, and nobody really knows what she's a spy. Essentially, nobody knows what she's trying to do. She's a badass bitch. She's got two scars on the back of her back, right where angel wings are, that look like angel wings would be there. It's pretty interesting. Um, but yeah, she's kind of sneaky, and she tells Roger that that he can call her Angel, but she, you know, she she's always undercover, look doing some shit. Um, and sometimes she's undercover. Uh, oh, and she also ha ha tails Roger Smith whenever he's searching for shit, and and she's she's a crafty bitch. Um, she has at one point probably her most notable role of, of pretending to be somebody else was becoming the secretary for the. Essentially, the mayor of uh, a Paradigm City, and his name is Alex Rosewater. And this is this guy right here. Uh, Alex Rosewater is uh, pretty much your quintessential baddie. You know what I'm saying? Big, the big bad. He he's corrupt. Uh, he with like with power hungry desires and all that shit, um, and so on and so forth. Actually, his father. Uh, uh, Gordon Rosewater, you can see right here, this lumbering oaf, uh, actually built all the domes. And uh, he's, it's tough to tell right now. He's possibly senile, but not really. And he only, he's obsessed with tomatoes. And later on, it's found out that the tomatoes that he's talking about are actually referenced in, in, to the people of Paradigm City. It's kind of interesting. So anyway, so those are your main uh, characters. And, and they'll be brought up throughout the uh the story, but that's basically everybody you really need to know. There's some other characters too. There's R. Dorothy uh, uh, Wainwright, who's like the most badass android like ever. She's super cool. She has no facial expressions and no uh, voice um, shifts or emotion in her in tone in her voice, but she's very expressive with even without that. It's based upon what she's saying and the context provided. So there's that. Now, um, what else can I do? I need to say about Big O. Big O is um, uh, everybody just kind of like starts their lives over. They they have they don't have memories of, of what they used to do and, and how life was, but they have basic memories like how to eat, breathe, and all that shit. Um, and they kind of just kind of gravitate towards like instinct, like oh my instinct is telling me to do this. Um, the police system is is completely interwoven with the military police uh, military so now the military police which causes just it's basically a police state in a lot of ways um well i shouldn't say that but it is it is definitely uh, uh vibes of authoritarian uh regime um alex rosewater has no appreciation for uh any anyone outside the dome but the poor people and realistically paradigm city altogether he doesn't really give that much of a shit about it uh it doesn't really matter uh he's already the most powerful person in this whole uh city so he doesn't really give all that much of a shit okay so now i need to explain to you what the 2008 financial crisis was and i have so many see you probably should pull up if you can like the stream if not you don't have to but i have graphics to go along with it because this shit gets confusing very quickly um so anyway so the 2008 financial crisis started uh i won't explain the beginnings uh the, the very beginning of it um and and but like we were kind of already off to, to a rocky road as far as like uh, the the economy and stuff like that. We weren't really doing so hot. We were kind of getting off the backs of some bullshit, but we'll talk about that later. Um, however, uh, let me pull up this. Okay, so 
here we are. Here is, uh, oh, I gotta get rid of the chat too, just so you guys can see what the fuck's going on. Okay, so here we have some things. We have some drawings. The housing market on the left, then it, next to the right of that is uh, the banks, which are basically the lenders. These, these are the banks that you would get your mortgages from. Uh, as an example below, I have written Wells Fargo. You have the investment banks, uh, which are basically just people who you could go to, to uh, or, or, or banks rather that invest in things they invest in like in, previously they've invested in like buildings like oh hey you know like we'll give you guys some money for construction if you know um if you pay it forward to us like that's a smart thing the bank actually makes money off that that uh investment because of interest so anyway so there's that and then you have credit agencies credit agencies are simply like your credit score or you know what's a good idea how secure is uh, investing in this field, in stocks, in, uh, you know, a CD or, or like a, 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 what's it called, a savings account, you know, that builds interest. Like, credit agencies will tell you what's a good idea, what's not a bad idea. Uh, any questions so far? See? Are you all good? I think I'm good. All right, cool, cool, cool. Because it gets, like I said, crazy quick. So, so, okay, so, uh, you have, let me pull up my notes just to make sure uh, I'm on this. Okay, cool. So, uh, so simply, the banks, uh, like Wells Fargo, let me pull this up. Whoops, it's the wrong one. Uh, oh, that's the Firefox. God damn it, Keith, come on. Fucking, oh, okay, that's why. So, you have, oh my God, I'm sorry, boys. I'm fucking this up real bad. Okay, cool. So you have, essentially, um, the, if you look right here, you have, there we go, this is looking good. Okay, you have the banks. They lend homeowners money, uh, which is essentially a, a mortgage. You know what I'm saying? They, they lend you money, which is what a mortgage is. It's a loan for a house, and then you pay it back, and then they gain some interest on that. Simple enough, right? So the banks were giving out what's called prime mortgages, which means, hey, do you have, this is this is before all the bullshit happened. Do you have good credit? Do you have a stable job? Are you able to pay back this mortgage? If the answer is yes, you are a prime mortgage candidate, meaning, you know, you're you're gonna pay this back. You're you're a good person. You're what we're looking for. You're, you're you know, that. Um, but, and then what the banks were also doing was they were um, compiling a bunch of uh, these mortgages together and they were packaging them to the investment banking. And we'll talk about that in one second. But the reason why they, these investment bankings even gave a shit about the housing market was simply because um, the the Federal Reserve lowered interest rates to 1% and they, they kept them at 1%. And what that meant was if you had a savings account, you, didn't, you weren't getting a lot of money back uh, through interest. You know what I'm saying? Your, your money wasn't accru accruing interest over a long period of time or, you know, uh, with a lot of money. There wasn't a lot of yield on what you, you know, you were trying to, you were investing in. So people went, fuck that shit. You know, I'm going to do more risky things than a savings account. I'm going to go into stocks. Oh, and that's essentially what the investment banking is kind of like. And, or I'm going to, you know, um, invest in, 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 like I said, like, uh, eventually what people did is they, they were able to to buy shares like like stocks they were able to to invest in people's mortgages it sounds very weird but a third party was able to invest in a group which is eventually it's, it's called a security but we'll talk about that in a second so so essentially all you need to know is because of the Fed holding down the interest rates to one uh, percent people looked to the stock market to make money and they they, they essentially not the stock market the housing market they essentially turn the housing market into a casino best way to describe it so um these wells fargo the banks like wells fargo were uh taking all of those um those uh mortgages and putting them all together and and packaging them in a bundle and what they would end up doing with that is they would let me see if i can show this um yeah here it is they would uh, give it to the investment banking. And as you can see underneath investment banking, it says uh, they wanted to buy the mortgage from the banks. So they were hoping, hey, give us the, that shit. Um, 
now the homeowners will uh, owe us money. And this is a very common thing in, in having a mortgage. You know, the banks sell off your debt to like to other other banks all the time. You can in like the course of like a year sometimes have like two different banks take the place of your original bank. Like, oh, now you your mortgage is, is owned by this bank and that bank. So there's a lot of deals behind the scenes. Essentially, if like, it's kind of like if C owed me a dollar, but I was like, hey, right now, if you give me uh, 75 cents, I'll give you uh, the I'll give you the dollar that C owes me, if that makes sense. Um, and that's what these these banks would do. So, um, so if you think about it, these mortgage banks were getting or these lender banks rather, like Wells Fargo, were getting money on both sides. They were like, hey, well, we're getting you know interest for as long as we hold your your mortgage and also if we can sell it off to these other banks and or even package it you know and so whatever um so we're actually getting money on kind of both sides so we're looking pretty good so the regular banks the mortgage banks the lender lending banks were happy the investment banks were like we want to do some more shit i want to fuck up some people's lives so what they did was uh, they would do what I was talking about. They would bundle mortgages together and let random investors uh, buy shares of that bundle. And the bundle, the, the bundle of of um, mortgages is called a security. So people would be able to invest in what's called a security, a bunch of people's mortgages that you know you could just you could invest in, and now you own a piece of that. You know, so all the interest that comes in, you get some of that too. So everything makes sense so far? See you all good? Yeah, I've actually heard about this. Okay, cool. So so it's you know, people are money is being traded around, but no real money is is different. And if you see this, you can kind of see already, a lot of this is dependent on the uh the homeowners the homeowners paying back their mortgages, you know, and that's why they were doing this with prime uh mortgages, you know what I'm saying? And now we're gonna have to talk about subprime mortgages. Because these banks were like, we are making fucking bank, dude. We are selling these mortgages out to these other banks. We need to get more mortgages in here so they can fucking bundle these. And the investment banking was like, we, you need to do this so we can get more bundles and get more people giving us money to invest in these securities, these, the bundles. So that's basically what happened. And then you have the regular banks, the Wells Fargo's, going and saying, and you're going to see a lot of arrows connect, like kind of pointing back at each other. It's like Spider-Man pointing at Spider-Man, that meme. Um, so these these banks, would uh, they eventually loosened up their restrictions and their criteria for people they would lend money to. This is now called a subprime mortgage, meaning the prime was, these are the good people. These are prime cream of the crop, people who are gonna pay this back. Subprime is, they don't have a job. They don't have good credit. They don't have, uh, constant employment they've had spotty employment for fucking the last five years they're shitty scumbags they were mean to me and kicked my cat i don't like these people they're subprime <laughs> so as you can see i have it right here uh these banks loosened who they would uh um lend mortgages lend money like you know give mortgages to uh, they allowed people with bad credit as an example to get loans so subprime like the people who just create new uh emails to keep getting that free month of prime <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> exactly. So if you think about this, there are a lot of people now who are get getting houses. There are less houses on the market. This, of course, is going to shoot the amount of like, you know, there's less houses to, to, be, to be had. So people, you know, there's less op options. So when the demand is high and the supply is low, you can sell what supply you do have at a higher cost. This means that the housing market shot up in price. So we have that over here. Um, the housing market shot the fuck up because they were giving mortgages to people, more people. You know what I'm saying? So there were more, less houses available. I think we're pretty, we're off to a pretty good start here. Uh, I don't think that there's anything that needs to be explained here. Cool. So when this was happening, you now had people who were were getting loans that they really couldn't even pay back. The banks thought, okay, well. We can do some shit. So they started to do what is now called predatory lending practices. And one of the, the major contributors to event to this whole bullshit is adjustable rate mortgages. Did you say something, C? 
No, I'm just okay. laughing because okay. I just heard something about this recently. Okay, so adjustable rate mortgages are terrible. Basically, what they are is so someone who can't pay dick, they're like, I can't, I can't afford this million dollar house that I want to buy real bad. I only work at McDonald's, and they went and these these mortgage companies are you know these mortgage brokers, the brokers are the people who work at the banks, and they would give you mortgages. So the, these mortgage brokers would go, all right, how about this? We'll give you an adjustable rate mortgage, and what that means is you only have to pay, like I have it right down here, you only have to pay a hundred dollars for your for uh. Uh, for the first year for your home. That means the first year, every month, you only gotta pay $100. Anyone could pay $100 a month. And then the second year, it, we're, it's gonna be adjusted and it's gonna increase every year. So the second year, all of a sudden, now you have to pay $1,000 a, a month. And some people who have, you know, who aren't, who don't have a lot of money are like, well, that's, that's getting kind of expensive. And then all of a sudden, they find out that, oh, in the third year, you have to pay $10,000 a month. You know what I'm saying? So like it, it goes up and up. So at first you could pay your mortgage, but then you can't after a while. This is uh, the adjustable rate mortgage. And what that did was it, it made people who were these subprime mortgage uh, candidates lose their houses because they'd be like, dude, the, the mortgage payments are going up and up and up. I cannot afford this. So they would default on their houses. Defaulting on your house means I can't pay for it and the bank takes it back. So all these houses went back on the market because the bank got them back and they, they tried to sell them to, to random people, you know, now. And now you have all these houses uh, back on the market. So now the fucking, the, the housing market crashes. So the housing market crashes because now you have a influx of, of houses on the market and people are like, what the fuck's going on? Um, and the Wells Fargo banks are hanging out with the investment banks and they're, they're doing some shady shit. What they're doing is they were, um, they were putting, Shoot sorry, what's he? Shoot dice in the alley. Yeah, exactly. They were, they were doing some shady shit. They were, uh, taking prime mortgage, prime mortgages, which were the good shit. And they were bundling them. Remember I was talking about those bundles, those securities, they were bundling them with bad junk uh, mortgages together and before all this like this this used to be a very good investment remember how the investment banking the investment banks were actually allowing pe investors to invest in this this was believed to be at, at when uh at first this was believed to be a good way to make money and that's because when it was prime mortgages which meant hey if you have good credit and if you have a good job then we're gonna give you this and more, most likely, you're not going to default on your house. People, d prime mortgage uh, candidates don't typically default on their houses because they can afford it. Um, so with that being said, these credit agencies, this is the fourth member of this story. These, these credit agencies were like, hey, these are good ideas. Like like investing in these these uh, securities is a really smart idea. So you have, I have it right here. They, would, they call them triple A ratings. Uh, they they rate them a triple A. Triple A is the S tier. It's the S class, top tier, highest you can possibly get as far as like ratings. Like, and the credit agency was basically like, if you're trying to invest in, in something, this is a good idea. I have it even up here. They said investing in this shit is super good. Uh, is a super good idea, boys. And uh, if you see, it says these, this rating, this triple A rating, is based on prime mortgages. Uh, but that rating wasn't changed after banks started. Uh, selling subprime mortgages. So meaning now now that all the criteria of who they're they're lending money to these banks changed But they still had the good rating. It's essentially like this imagine a business is run by a really hard worker And that guy sells it off to a fucking piece of shit high school dropout and then everyone goes Oh, yeah, but it, it has the same name. It's, it keeps the same name and like oh, yeah, it's that's a that's a really good place They have a really good um, Reputation and you go there and you're like these people fucking they're suck Amazing. Right, exactly. Yeah, exactly. All the fat moms and, and me love this place. And then all of a sudden you're like, why does it I'm suck? The fat moms. Yeah, right. And you're like, why does it suck all of a sudden? It's like, you you know, the, the, they, they, they behind the scenes, they, they changed some shit. You know what I'm saying? And that's what this was. So so they got to keep the AAA rating whilst, while now giving you crap. You know what I'm saying? You were investing in shit that was going to fall south. So you have people who are defaulting on homes on one side. You have people who are investing in people who are defaulting on homes as well. So you can kind of see how this is just getting really, really convoluted. You can see all these arrows. They're all pointing back at each other because 
all the money is is based upon it's inflation really it's it's based upon the same linchpin as long as people are paying their mortgages we're good now I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, well, in stocks, you're able to bet against things. Hey, I bet it's going to go down. Well, they actually had this in the housing market. Um, let me see where I'm at because I explained a whole lot of shit. I talked about that. Talked about that. Uh, la, 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 la. Okay. Also, there is, um, yeah, here it is. This is called credit default swaps. The, this is basically a way for investors to go, I bet this person is going to fuck up and they're going to lose their home. I bet that this security, this this bundle of, of mortgages is going to fuck up. X goes, I'm I'm back, Elwell. Can you uh, hit me with a friendly 10 second uh, bullet point? If not, it's good. I'll figure it out for sure. I'm basically just talking about people. People were giving out um, mortgages that they couldn't uh, pay for because the banks were getting money for just dishing out um, uh, mortgages, which is true. These these they're called uh, mortgage brokers at, who work at the banks. People were getting laid off while the banks were getting paid off. That's right. Uh, these mortgage brokers were actually getting bonuses for just even didn't matter what type of didn't matter if the people could uh, pay their mortgages or not as long as somebody was getting a mortgage that day they were getting bonuses so they went i don't give a fuck if you could pay this or not as long as you're making money or sorry sorry as long as as long as you're signing off on taking our money i get money and i don't give a shit so, so i be, get money yeah exactly so now we're talking about eggs also i'll send you the link this is going to be on on youtube if you ever do want to watch it back because there's a lot to this. This is the this is the tough part. Uh, that sounds like really shitty, uh, really shitty system. Oh, it is. It's all bullshit, and it's dependent on on nothing. I mean, you know, what I'm saying it's dependent on people paying their mortgages who can't pay their mortgages. Uh, is it still like that? No, no. Thankfully, uh, it, this changed. The government got involved in it, but we're gonna that's gonna come up later. So, so anyway, these things are called credit default swaps, which is basically insurance that these fourth companies i don't have them up here but the, oh, sorry these fifth companies because there's four people up there this fourth group um we're giving out like aig was one of was one of the biggest ones they were giving out these credit default swaps which is insurance offered um if you're investing in mortgages basically if you're investing in people's mortgage uh, uh their their the securities on people's mortgages um so if people stop paying for their mortgages that you invested in uh, the insurance would protect you from losing a bunch of money and you could even make money based upon on what credit default swap you had. The problem is if the entire housing market crashes, AIG, these companies that give out this insurance, don't have enough money to pay for everything. You know what I'm saying? Like they don't have enough money to pay out everybody. So they fucking fall under too. So people are like, they're also, you know, buying into that too. And it's fucking killing everybody. Like, so basically if you see it, there's every single step of making money has has major holes in it and it's just like being you know you know and, and it, it all goes bad it's all based upon like as long as everything goes well it'll go fine and because these banks were giving out mortgages to people that couldn't afford them that that was what tipped it over and fucked everybody else over and it just caused this domino effect um so far see are you good every everybody good so far yep uh eggs goes um uh, I, I probably will. I just wanted to be able to talk with you about it. Yeah, this is not that important to be totally honest. This is just a lot of these points are gonna be talked about later. But but you'll the still be able to. Thing is the anime. You'll still be able to follow through when I start linking this to the anime. Um, Eggs goes. Banks falling under uh, is such a fucking nightmare. Uh, it's insane. Yes, that is exactly correct. It's a nightmare to the fucking country too. Oh. They can't really fall under anymore. Well, that's why that's where the term too big to fail comes in. And we're going to talk about why that's a problem too. Anyway, so yep. so this this whole bullshit is causing a bubble. And the people who who couldn't afford their um, mortgages, the the adjustable rate mortgage uh, subprime mortgages, they they burst the bubble. So, uh, <laughs> and um, basically all it was Sorry, was just a a, a crock pot of inflation and and shitty mortgages cool so um eventually what happened is all these companies on across the whole the investment banking the the regular banks and the housing market and these security uh like companies like aig all got fucked over and needed to get bailed out by the country by the government because what was happening was 
the the government was like, dude, so many people have their houses owned by these banks. If these banks fall under, what are the people? What are these people gonna do? Are their their houses? Where are their houses gonna go? The, the, these banks are gonna have to liquidate. If they if I file bankruptcy, they're gonna have to liquidate their own assets. If they have to liquidate their own assets, the bank owns the homes that these people are living in. The ha houses are gonna have to get sold to somebody. What the fuck is going on? So people are <laughs> freaking the fuck out. They're like. The entire country is going to lose their houses, dude. What the fuck? And, and here's the thing. Every bank was doing this. Every bank across the whole board. It wasn't one bank. It was just, I keep saying Wells Fargo because I'm trying to create a, a, a face for you guys. It wasn't just them, though. It was every bank across the board. You love Wells Fargo so much. I do. Um, so, and you know what this did? This whole housing market crash? And, and investment, people are investing in shit. It caused the whole stock market. Now we're talking about the stocks, the stock market to halt, to freeze because like, what the fuck's going on? Which eventually, which in turn caused the stock market to fucking crash, dude. It fu it crashed because of this. Because now, you know, all, everyone's money is getting fucked up. When, when, when people, when the economy loses money, when people lose money, that ain't good. For the, you know, the stock market goes, that's less people who can invest. That's less money able to be invested. Eggs goes, um, I feel like you're just uh, being an amazing teacher just because of your personality. Thanks, man. Uh, the name Wells Fargo still uh, inspires fear. <laughs> that's right. They're my bank and I'm terrified of them. So... So basically, the stock market now crashes. Everything's fucked. No one has home. Well, not a lot of people ha are like who who are re retarded and were like, I make, I work at McDonald's and I I just got a million dollar house, you know, and now I can't pay for it and they took it away from me. And also the stock market's crashed. And uh, yeah, and because the stock market crashes, now people are losing fucking jobs and shit like that. Like, cause you know, because like essentially there's less money being generated. People aren't able to invest in companies anymore. So these companies don't have as much money. If these companies don't have as much money they they you know got to cut corners somewhere so they cut jobs so they're cutting jobs now so it just it dominoes even in the economic sector so everything the whole fucking country is on fire essentially the dollar is going to shit we are all fucked at this point this is 2008 by the way uh any, <laughs> anyway it's all on fire it, We're it's screwed. fucked that Com was 12 years ago, by the way. <laughs> companies are are uh, the all these companies are begging Boiler. are begging. Yeah, right. All these companies are begging for uh for people to buy them out for for fucking for mergers to happen for you know like all this shit. The Federal Reserve has to step in and bail out, meaning they go, hey, guess what, banks? We will buy all of your debt. We will buy that from you. We will give you money on debt that everyone knows will not get like basically this it's a kind of debt like this imagine a fucking dead person owes you 60 bucks and and somebody goes hey guess what i will give you 60 bucks and i'll and now he'll owe me 60 bucks everybody well, knows you're not well, getting the 60 bucks from a dead guy wait a minute What's up? how fresh is this dead guy yeah <laughs> he's he's like kind of warm but he's starting to he's starting to get a little hard i mean the black market is you know can't be choosy on he's a smoker and a drinker and a, and a midnight toker. Um, anyway, so so the Fed Fed Reserve comes in and they 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 literally turn on their printers and they go. Brrr, they start printing out money. They 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 push out the Congress pushes out a stimulus package to help the economy. Basically, they go, hey everybody, I know the whole world's on fire, but guess what? Here's free money. And everyone goes, what the fuck? How are we? It's just like right now with COVID. How are we in an economic recession? But we're gaining, we're getting free money. This makes no sense. And and the Fed and the well, you know, everybody just goes, shut the fuck up, just take the money, just shut, 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 shut up. Please spend it, please spend it. Oh my fucking god, dude, this is crazy. So probably spend it on your houses. Panic is ensuing. Everyone is shitting their pants. The beds are all shit. Uh, Eggs goes. Uh, uh, America 2000, uh, Road to Venezuela. <laughs> yeah, for real. 2008, Road to Venezuela. You, you, you nailed it. Inflation is fucking in every sector um and then comes the famous term this is this is the synonymous term with the 2008 financial crisis especially really with the 2008 housing market crash this is the term too big to fail the term is talk it's basically about the banks were too big for the economy 
to allow them to go under. I already talked about it. You know, hey, all you know, these banks have so many people, so many people's mortgages through them that we can't afford to lose them. You know what I'm saying? Um, they, we, there's too many people depending on them, and there's too much of the economy that's depending on them. This made the banks. I'm not kidding you. This so this in, the banks are fucked, right? And this is what the banks do. The, this makes the make the banks think that they can take on more risk than they can handle because they know that the government will will would not let them fail. They knew they were taking on too much risk, but they went, we own so much of everyone's money that the America can't afford to lose us. So if we go under, America's fucked. So the government will not allow that. So they knew that they're like, dude, we are taking way too much debt to risk ratio is all fucked. We are really not in a good spot. But we don't give a shit because you know what? We're going to make all this money and we're not going to have to pay shit. We're going to make all this money and we're going to get paid. But we're not going to have to worry about paying it back because because fuck you. That's why. Fuck you. That's why. <laughs> so that is where the term too big to fail came up. And it's fucked. And at first it started with the banks. And then they went, ah, eh, well, these automotive industries, um, you know, these, all, all these, these car companies who make cars, well, they, they're too big to fail too. And then it's like, how is everyone too big to fail? And then they were like, also, and, and people need money. So we're going to give them, the, like I said, the stimulus package is part of it. They spent, the, the original amount that they had in mind for this whole too big to fail idea was $700 trillion to spend. To That's a lot of trillion. That's. Uh, just a bullshit money, seven hundred trillion dollars. Um, anyway, eggs goes. Uh, that's the exact opposite of what you should uh, do. Uh, to be honest, it puts a bandaid on an infected wound exactly, and it makes it worse. Uh, even if if you sometimes have to do it, dude. It's it was fucking crazy. So, um, so anyway, so basically, that is. The reason why people were losing jobs, that's the whole thats the whole reason why I went from the housing market crash to the financial crisis, because it eventually bled out of the housing market and bled into every other sector of our economy. Everyone, anyone have any questions? Everyone so good so far? Because that's basically it. That's that's all that I got right now. Oh, so I will say, be. sorry, go ahead, go ahead, see. All of the, the government should have just picked, picked and chose which houses. They should have been like, nah, we'll take all the ones that are paying. Up right. Them, they could lose their houses. Right. Yeah. You know, they kind um, of made their bed. <clears throat> they they did try to implement regulations that would stop would uh, stop these these banks and these these companies all all the companies altogether from taking on too much debt to risk uh you know their debt to risk ratio and make sure it wasn't too too serious, um, so and we really don't know if they uh they are working because like so basically one of the things was like. Uh, while all this was happening, while the while the government was bailing out these banks, the bank CEOs of of some of these banks were getting fucking major bonuses. the The same week that that the government was bailing them out because they couldn't afford anything, and and the government was saying, "All right, when we if we bail you out, then you guys can't take any major bonuses or anything like that until you guys are at a stable point." But they everyone fudged the books. They were like, "Oh yeah, we're stable. Shut the fuck up. It's okay. We're we're good." You know. So they and and the people that were moderating this were just dog shit. You know. what I'm saying it wasn't. There was no real regulation because this has never happened before. So this is brand new. So people, like I said, so you had CEOs of these companies that were begging the the government to bail them out, who were like, "Yeah, we don't give a shit." It's like it's it's seriously like like this. It's like, dude, I like asking your dad for like 50 bucks, and you're like, "Thank you so much." Uh, like I really need this for like for my car or for my for, for college, and then you go, "Hey." Hey, dude, yo, give me some drugs for 50 bucks. Like, fuck my dad. He's a piece of shit. That's literally what these people were doing. You know, like, it was just fucked up. So anyway, Banks so that... Doing drugs. Yeah, exactly. So that essentially is the, the story of that. Now we can get into the good, fun, and the ugly. Let me switch back to this shot. Okay, cool. So now we're over here. You can see me. You don't need to see that diagram anymore. Now we're going to talk about how that relates to Big O. All right. <clears throat> Is because all the money that they could have spent on robots, they spent on houses. Uh, possibly. I left out one important part that we're going to get back to, which is the very, very, very beginning of why all this happened and why we got, why we were in a spot, uh, why our economy was in a spot that allowed us to fail in such a hard way. And I will get back to that. 
just know that there is a there's a prologue that of, of the tw 2008 financial crisis that I did not talk about yet, and we will talk about that at the end of this essay, and it has some some real serious ramifications that will explain so much. Okay, I can't wait. So. Paradigm City, which is a city that Big O is, is taking place in, lost its memories, uh, as I talked about. Its purpose, it lost its memories, its purpose, and its plan for the future. The entire city had to start all, all over again. This is not unlike the U, uh, this is not unlike um, the United States after the 2008 financial crisis. As you can see, as I talked about it, everyone lost their jobs. Everyone, like, you, you had people who were in uh, research development get fucked. You are you don't exist anymore. People had to take up new professions. People were getting laid off. You had many people going back to college to, to get degrees in other fields, like more secure fields, because they're, like, you know, they lost their jobs. The unemployment like rate, estate. what's that, see? <laughs> like real estate or banking. Yeah, right. The unemployment rate was so high it peaked in 2009, where it was at 10.1%. One out of every 10 people lost their job and didn't have a job because of it. Like, or, or job. It, was, it really was considered meaningful employment, part-time work, uh, when you were like a, a full-time chemist does not count as uh, you're still considered <clears throat> unemployed because you're below the threshold of living, so on and so forth, whatever. This doesn't matter. But just so you know, one out of every 10 people because of this did not have a job. Like a career. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Didn't have a, a suitable or a substantial career, let's say that. Cool. So, so like I said, so basically, just like how everyone had to restart um, in Paradigm City after the event that happened 40 years ago that caused everyone to lose their memories, these people had to restart after the financial crisis and all their past was lost. So essentially, it's the same thing as losing your memories. And I'm going to explain why that's like that. Eggs goes, that's so damn weird to think about. Yeah, it really is. Uh, Eggs goes, uh, I hope I don't have to deal with, uh, with shit like that. Well, with COVID going on right now and, and all these, like, we, we probably won't, but we're, prob we're going to experience some economic stress because of COVID. Like, I, I, me and Eggs were talking about in the Discord, like, I, we were looking at all the, uh, the companies that already have folded you know, during COVID. Now they probably didn't have a, a large amount of, um, you know, money to, to work with. And that's, and, and this was basically just like the, the straw that broke the camel's back, but so on and so forth. Eggs goes, uh, I don't need to turn 18 and get my shit planned and get shot with it. You can't get a job and your, and your saved money is worth fucking nothing. I know, dude, it's really scary when like, I, I, it's, I'm not trying to scare you, but it really is a scary thought that at any point fucking assholes who are just corrupt as shit can ruin your life. Um, where did my music go? Uh, let me put this back on. Wait, video paused. Well, speaking of that, <clears throat> go ahead, I'm watching this good show about, uh, Vikings. Okay. Called Norsemen. It's pretty good. Called Norsemen? It's like a, yeah, it's like a um, very dry comedy about like Viking life. Oh. Almost almost Monty Python-esque. I dig it. A, even a little more dry than that. <laughs> it's pretty good. It's, uh, it's, it's weird. It's like you watch the first episode and you're like, I don't know if I want to watch this. You just keep watching it anyway and it just sucks you in. <laughs> um, where was but it? But I recommend it. Exos, uh, well, yeah, but if everything goes to plan, I can move out at like 18, 19, and that's the last thing I need. Yeah, man. If, as long as you can do it, just look into what you need and, you know, and, and just make sure that you have enough money for it. And like, if you, for some, some reason, something happened to your money, you can afford like a couple months, you know what I'm saying, of, of living. Um, you must not live in New York, New Jersey, or California. <laughs> that is very, that is very true. Um, so anyway, so. So after everyone lost their memory in Paradigm City, they, uh, I, I talked about this, they, they, the citizens kind of just went into fields that they felt right. Uh, citizens adapted and learned skills that felt right and began working on seemingly new fields, even if it was possibly the same career path that they previously held before they lost their memories. You know what I'm saying? So like, oh, I feel like I should be a cop and maybe they actually were a cop, but maybe they weren't. So this is not unlike everyone who lost their jobs like again the 10.1 percent of people who lost their jobs because of the 2008 um who were who was like well i guess i'll go into this field i feel like this field is a, is a good fit for me this is i feel like this feels right so it's very similar in that regard you kind of just have to go by by, by uh 
by gut feeling, by instinct. And that's the same thing with these people did in Paradigm City. So, um, Paradigm, fo uh, Paradigm City focused on immediate necessities for society. Roger Smith, um, I'm going to pull his face up right here. Um, Roger Smith uh, says in the first episode, and I quote, if they're smart enough to figure out how to operate machinery and get electricity, they can still have something of a civilization even without a history. Um, this is going to combine with a shot of a police squad cars escorting military vehicles while an officer directs traffic. Society is almost identical to how it currently operates under law and order. Uh, this means that jobs responsible for expansion like research and development and growth were not a main focus. You can see Paradigm has not recovered from the devastation from the event. And uh, um, builder, buildings have toppled over. The roof of the hangar Roger meets the kidnappers in is nothing more than, a be than bent steel beams crossing over one another loosely. This means that necess ne uh, necessary work on rebuilding from the event is still going on currently. So they haven't... Basically, all that's saying is... And, and you can see it too. In the, in the shot, you see a fucking building. I'm going to play it right now for you guys. You see a shot of a, uh, of a building that's toppled over and it's just like chilling. Um... Let me pull up VLC. Um, but, you know, so like, so there's there's still buildings that aren't even fucking set up uh, correctly. So let's see. We are here. Uh, la la la, Paradigm. Paradigm wrecked. Cool. All right, I'm gonna show this to you guys right now. Let me just uh, pull up the source. Window capture. And there it is. Very good. Okay. Oh, and I gotta put it behind me. Give me one second, guys. Okay, there we go. And we don't need to see any of this big O shit anymore. Cool. Okay. So here is the the shot of what the town looks like. Oh, you guys can't even see it. Fuck, I'm retarded. Sorry, guys. Hold on a second. Why isn't it playing? <sighs> Hold on one second, boys. Oh, this is butt. It's not playing. <sighs> All right, sorry, boys. Give me one second. Let me just get this uh, this pulled up for you. Um, I'll pull this up for right now. Let's see, uh, can I do display capture? I can't. Hmm, 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 hmm. And I can't do a window capture for this? It's so bizarre. Automatic uh, multi-adapter compatibility. Maybe that's it. Let's try it. Well, it should be, it should see something. Oh, if these videos don't work, I'm gonna be so sad because I worked so hard to make these videos. Um, oh yes, your boy. Your boy knows what he's doing, sort of, and he does it. God, you'll love to see it happen. All right, sorry about that, guys. Sorry for the quick, uh, or rather kind of long, drawn out bullshit of just that. All right, here we go. So. There you go, there's the scene. I'm gonna actually pull it to the right so you guys can see it a bit more than just me. There, cool. So now you guys will be able to see the shot. So here is uh, what Paradigm City looks like. You can see, dilapidated. There's, it looks like shit. It's all fucked up. Um, this, is, this is basically like the beginning, it's act one. It's just exactly what I was talking about where just the town, the city is all fucked up still. Um, so they're still recovering from this crisis of their own. Um, they use the word catastrophe, but honestly, Catastrophe and crisis, I think, are. Um, see, what's that term? Same, same can be used for, for the same thing. Synonym. What? Synonym. Thank you. They're they're cinnamons to each other. So there's your boy Roger Smith. Um, and there's like the beams that I'm I was talking about. So it's all fucked up and shit. And he's negotiating some cool shit. Okay, cool. So there is that. Um. Uh, this leads to the conclusion that, that the former occupations, uh, such as research and development and all that other shit, uh, synonyms, eggs, uh, ah, I forgot this, this was a conspiracy theory. I was engrossed by the T 
teach daddy volt yeah i know right sorry <laughs> um but uh so this leads to the conclusion that the former occupations have been i'm gonna leave roger smith's face up too because i like it uh have been cut or certain industries have been outright dismantled as amenities and other and anything deemed unnecessary has been forgotten and unlikely to be the focus of attention in the post-apocalyptic world. I mean, literally, they had a catastrophe. If you guys want to see what this catastrophe looked like, um, this, now here's the thing. I'm going to show you a video. This isn't exactly what the event was. This is just what people believed the event to be, I, I think. This isn't absolute, I guess is all I'm saying. Oh, I'm losing my mic. But yeah, this is the event. You can see it's just a bunch of mega deuces, a bunch of big O's, just going around, <laughs> destroying fucking everything. This is what's believed to be the event that uh, happened 40 years ago. And nobody really knows why everyone lost their mind, their memory though, because none of this explained it. And there's a bunch of bald kids. Everyone loves to see bald kids. So anyway, so there is the event. Um, interesting, interesting, interesting. I like the, the, these songs. Um, okay, cool. So, let's go back to this. All right. So, we're getting through this, guys. We're almost done. Because now that I, you guys have all the, the former information, this is really going to start to connect. Um, uh, th blah, blah. This is not unlike... So, so, they basically had to cut jobs in research and development and basically anything that wasn't deemed important, like police, you know, public works. This is not unlike the job market in a post-2008. Jobs in the research and development field were some of the first to go. Research into new technologies with low probability of revenue generation were scrapped to focus on necessities and guarantees of revenue generation. Um, but if you look at the high class of paradigm, you see life has not been affected by this market loss, uh, at least too much. Wealthy, the wealthy partake in pseudo speak easy entertainment and have wealth to spend indiscriminately as seen by Dorothy, who is, she's just an android that I talked about before. It's not really that important, but basically her grandfather is tipping a pianist for playing his song for Dorothy. And he's got like, it's, it looks like stacks. I'm just going to say that. It's looking pretty good. So seemingly only the lower class and the middle class are affected by this amputation in occupation. The citizens outside the dome, uh, you know, those are, those are those individuals. Uh, these are the people unable to live anywhere else but the shanties that satellite the dome, which is unclear why as, as they're shown to be vacant businesses and apartment buildings throughout the city inside the domes. It's very bizarre, but for some reason there's, there's a class d difference there. Um, uh... Uh, this gives two reasons. Either the citizens outside the domes are choosing to live in squalor, or they cannot afford to live in the domes, which is very reminiscent of, as we talked about, the housing market, where you just would see vacant, beautiful homes, you know, foreclosed. We have a friend, me and Steve have a friend, who had a great fucking home that was foreclosed on. So, I mean, it's, it's not uncommon. Um, you see large amounts of crime uh in in the anime big o one of the variables attributed to the to volume of crime is economic stress this is the real world we're talking about now when the economy is down crime goes up uh, this is not the only variable to discern an increase in crime but one of many um cool uh see it and everything all good anyone questions we're all good all good cool the military in in teacher teacher <laughs> yeah yeah what what bitch I also sound Can like I'm eight too. Over? Yeah, what do you want? <laughs> like I'm just two eight year olds on top of each other's shoulders. What? <laughs> um, so the military in in Big O is merged with the police in an effort to sustain peace and cut down crime rate. This makes sense as crime goes up when the economy goes down. Mass unrest, rioting, and thievery become commonplace. Corruption befalls the police as money dries up. This is shown in an episode where corrupt police attempt to kill a fellow officer to keep him silent in the shadows of an ongoing riot on the bridge. Basically, it's this guy, Bonnie, I think his name is. He He's a good cop, but, but the higher-ups in the police... Uh, uh, department kill him because he's seen some shady shit they've been doing uh, and he, they shoot him and he falls off a bridge but he doesn't really die but that's and he gets and tries, he gets stitches he just yeah right um, so anyway so basically you see you know even it, it's the economy is so bad in, in in Paradigm City that even the police are corrupt uh, well I mean you can argue that that doesn't mean they, they could be corrupt even outside of a economic uh, hellhole but whatever uh, Roger in episode oh. 7 what's that uh, so as enthralled as I am, 
I am. I'm actually very interested. But uh, I'm going to have to piece. Okay. Yeah, man. I mean, if you ever want to watch it, it's, it's going to be on the YouTube. Oh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to watch it back. Cool, cool, cool. All right, brother. Well, thanks for coming out, man. Appreciate it, and I'll Absolutely. catch you on the flip. All right. I'll catch you later, man. Later, later see. y'all. So, Roger, in episode seven, talks to Angel, uh, who we have right up here now, um, about Paradigm citizens not wanting to search for their memories. Uh, he explains how, you know, she, he asks, are you, you know, you're not from Paradigm City. And she's like, how did you know that? I was raised here. And he goes, no, because everybody in Paradigm City doesn't care about their uh, their past. They don't care about their history. Uh, they don't want to search for their memories. This has a strong connection to U.S. citizens not wanting to go back into their original fields of work after many went back to school for degrees in more secure fields or they st or after starting new lives in new career paths. Uh, Eggs goes, uh, uh, Seabear has, has to catch, uh, uh, Seabear has to catch his time with the three muskets. Yeah, right, exactly. Uh, they, they, it's hard to, to get three people together and hang out all, all at the same time. <laughs> um, <laughs> that's my boy, Eggs. So, anyway, where are we? Oh, I'm probably clipping pretty hard. All right, there we go. So, um, ba 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 ba. Uh, um, this is a strong connection people not wanting to go back into their original sectors um, with U.S. citizens after basically they did they did so much work to get where they are now in these new fields. They don't want to go back to their, you know, fields that they originally were in. They want, they're happy with where they're at, you know? And that's kind of just how people are. The people are very routine orientated. So, um, so anyway, uh, both Paradigm citizens and U.S. citizens have chosen to leave behind their old lives to continue on the new path they have set on. Um, so what I, what I believe is that Roger is a representative uh, of the Americans who have adapted and formed a new life in the wake of this catastrophe. He literally even calls it a catastrophe. Uh, we can talk about it right here. Actually, this is a great time to even bring this up because we were talking, uh, we're talking about exactly this. This used to be where people lived and worked up until 40 years ago, right? What do you think happened to all of them? They encountered the end of the world. You might call it a cataclysm. But it's not the end. We carry on. We're still alive. Just not concerned about appearances. So there you go. So literally, it is a catastrophe. Uh, cataclysm. Um, ba ba ba. So he represents the people who basically got their shit together and got back to work. Uh, or, you know, found new places of work. Um, he uh, represents Americans who have adapted and formed new lives in the wake of this catastrophe. Making the best out of the given situation... And he is successful because of that choice. He is he dresses very fancy. He's got an amazing car with all these gadgets. He's literally, he is, for all intents and purposes, just like Bruce Wayne. Like he he has the the butler. He's got Alfred. He's got like all the cool shit. You know what I'm saying? He's got the secret identity. He because he's the the big uh, he's the the Dominus of the Megadeus. He's the driver of Big O, if you will. Um, nobody knows about it. It's a secret. Uh, some people eventually find out. So really, he, it's, a, it's a very close parallel to Batman. Um, so anyway, um, he is also representative of the people that uh, made the best out of a given situation and is successful because of that. This past, uh, the past has no meaning to him as it does not have any influence on his current life. This is why he states that people of Paradigm don't care to regain their memories. Uh, they have moved forward instead of dwelling on the past and trying to reclaim something that they can't go back to. Basically, he looks at it and he goes, the, the fucking past doesn't do shit for me. It's not going to do anything for me. Uh, I left my SF. Well, now I just want to watch this anime. It's fucking awesome. It's only 26 episodes, too. It's really good. Uh, cool. So now we have Angel. We talked about her a bunch. Now we're going to really talk about her. This is, this is These are small little character. Uh, um, what do they call that? Uh, character analysis, if you will. Oh yeah, I love that whiskey. Angel rep is a representative of the Americans who can't get over their past. Basically, the people who don't shut the fuck up and keep bitching. Uh, they're upset with the economy. Forcing she's upset with the economy, forcing her out of the life that she once led, and will do anything, uh, including taking extreme risks to return to her former life. She is obsessed with finding memories. She's totally obsessed with it. 
That's her one and, and only uh, in, you know th- important thing in life. And just about just so you know, this whole um, discussion will not spoil the end of Big O for you. So don't worry. I'm actually all the cool plot twists and shit like that. I'm not talking about. So this is actually a, for the most part, spoiler-free uh, uh, discussion about Big O because all the points that I'm talking about are just about the world of Big O as, as a whole. This is why I said it. This is not what Big O is about. This is how Big O explains the fi- the financial crisis. Big O is about a completely, well, not completely. It's about a close, but not, it's really, really interesting. It's, it's, uh, you know what? It's actually completely different than what I'm talking about. What it actually talks about, this, the message it's trying to talk about, is a very Evangelion uh, kind of storyline. It's very, very interesting. So, you know, you can watch Big O and still, like, watch it with, like, a fresh fresh face. You know what I'm saying? It's completely, like, uh, brand new to you. So, just so you know, this won't ruin anything for you. Okay, cool. So... I'm basically just using Big O as a tool to explain the, the financial crisis. Um, so as, as I said, she's a representative of the bitches who can't get back to a, to a new job. Um, uh, bye bye. She is essentially a freelance journalist. She's investigating the economic shift. Um, she's constantly looking around for memories. Um, that's a whole thing. Uh, memories are kind of like something that can be found. They're not a very they're not an abstract thing like an idea. They are, but they're looking for like, like a book could be a memory. And granted, a memory is an idea, but the book can give you a memory. You know what I'm saying? So instead of just going, this book has a memory in it of something, they just go, this book is a memory. It's fucking stupid, in my opinion, because no one would speak like that. But that's what it is. So, oh, I'm doing great on time too. It's only 9:30. Um, so bye bye. She's essentially a freelance journalist investigating the economic shift. This is why she descends into the depths of the city through the remnants of the past to find the truth. She literally is taking a deep dive investigation to uncover the truth. This, and, and I actually have a person uh, that I can relate this to. Um, this is not unlike this guy. Uh, let me pull him up. Um, here we go. Matt Taibbi. Uh, uh, he, this is him on the Joe Rogan podcast. Uh, Talk, talking and... about how he um, uncovered like the whole story about uh, the 2008 financial crisis. He actually did this in real time, and like uh, he's a, he was a writer for the Rolling Stone or journalist for the Rolling Stone, and it ended up actually like doing a lot of great research on this 2008 financial crisis. While it's like like it was brand new, fresh, no one had had yet cracked what the fuck happened. Everyone, because after the, this, everyone was like, "What the fuck happened?" Like. I, I had a mortgage and now I defaulted on it. I don't I don't even know how that fucking happened. How is my mortgage going up? People don't understand finances. Finances can be difficult. So anyway, this is him talking about it. Uh, and and from that point forward, I I totally I felt like I I started to understand the whole mechanism, what you know, the subprime mortgage scam. It really was a scam. It's really it's really just a massive corporatized version of like selling uh, oregano as weed. Basically, uh, they they took stuff that these these incredibly worthless, uh, highly risky mortgage loans, right? You know, they would give out loans to everybody with a pulse. Um, you know, whether you had a job or not, whether you were a citizen or not, didn't matter. Important thing was to get the loan, immediately sell it off, chop it up, turn it into securities, and then they used this highly advanced um, sort of mathematical trick to turn all that sort of mortgage hamburger into AAA rated securities. So you'd have like a you know, a junk rated mortgage, like the riskiest uh, loan in existence, uh, something that was so toxic that country, companies like Countryride wouldn't want to hold on to it for more than a week because they were afraid that the stuff would blow up. And then they would sell it off to like a pension fund or, um, you know, an insurance company in the form of a triple A AAA rated security, which, you know, is as safe as a U.S. Treasury bond. So it was a, it was a scam. Uh, again, the, 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 the metaphor of, you know, baby powder, uh, taking baby powder and selling it as coke or whatever, that, that's exactly what it was. They just took worthless shit and sold it as something that was that was gold. Uh, and they got they did it for years and years and years and years. And they they knew that this gigantic, huge bubble of risk and disaster was just accumulating and that someday it was going to all explode and cascade and, and, and ruin the economy. But everybody was trying to time it right 
and and bet on when that would happen and make their money before that that judgment day came and uh it, it was it was fascinating once i once i started to learn about it it was just such a, an amazingly disgusting uh fascinating story that um it was just hard not eggs goes that's so sketchy is that illegal now it it is it's there's regulations in place. Believe it or not, all these people that did this shit never served a single day in jail. They got off completely scot-free. They had to pay some minor shit, you know what I'm saying? Very small shit. They they had to um, d- divert small amounts of their bonuses. Not nah, I shouldn't say small. They had to divert some of their bonus money, uh, you know, to paying back the government for five years. But that's it. That's that's literally it. They didn't serve no jail time. They fucked people's lives over old people and and minorities too their lives were ruined hold on one second their their lives were ruined because a lot of people like like you know when you're old you're like all right well all i got is my house i paid off my house i did all this you know like i i put all my money into my home you know taking care of it building something building a new addition there are regulations now uh in place that people believe this can't happen again but there's no guarantee that it can't happen again. Um, there's no there's no guarantee that those regulations are all encompassing of, of all the plot holes uh, or the pitfalls rather that that this you know d- causes. Uh, Eggs goes. Uh, they literally ruined people's entire lives and they came off with a net pro- positive. Oh yeah, and here's the thing: these people with debts and, and things like that too, like that. That doesn't just go away. Some of this debt will follow you and it'll be also given to your your kids and shit like that. So, you know, there's there's a lot of scary, scary shit, man. I mean, like at the end of the day, someone's gonna come knocking for money. Now, granted, some of this debt you don't have to pay. Like, if if your parents die or something like that, they will go, hey, well, uh, so you're gonna pay their, their debt back or what? You can go, I'm not paying shit, fuck you. It's not mine. You can do that. Um, but they, like I said, they will come to you next. So debt do- doesn't just go away even after death. So it's fucked, dude. It's really, you know, this it could be generational depending on if people, you know, allow it to be. Um, so anyway, so, you know, this is one of the biggest ones that Matt Taibbi, uh, like really uncovered. One of the biggest stories, like he really, he talks about it. He was not a financial journalist. He was a, uh, po- a political politician, um, like, you know, uh, journalist which is it's not as crazy as it may sound um this is a a, a, you know economics he didn't know dick about this is not unlike um angel where like she doesn't she's not a journalist by trade but she's just so compelled and drawn to this story you know what happened 40 years ago in paradigm city what is this event what the fuck is going on why does no one have memories why does no one care that they don't have memories the fuck an entire city you know and and they don't know dick i mean they think that everything they think paradigm city is the only city like ever there's nothing outside you know what i'm saying and like there's it's just a wasteland like there's people who live who satellite the domes you know what I'm saying? We're just outside the domes, but other than that, it's nothing out there. You know, there's a, it's a it's a whole world that people really don't even know shit about. They even talk about it. they're like, you know, yeah, these uh, the people before us 40 years ago had better technology. They were able to like put shit like they call satellites literally satellites in, in space stars. They were able to put man-made stars up there, and some of them fall down, and they're like, oh, it's an angel that fell instead of it being a fucking satellite. It is just a, you know what it's whole crazy shit you know man-made shit is falling from the sky essentially is is what's happening so anyway uh she literally is taking deep dive investigation angel we're talking about her again uh oh whoops i got him stupid um uh she's literally taking a deep dive investigation to uncover the truth because she's descending through uh like there are sewers and whatnot throughout paradigm city and there's also like there's like it's like how futurama has new york and new new york um below it where or sorry it's no new new york is on the top and then new york is below it where like it's all like the sewer people it's a whole city under there it's like that and there's like it just goes deeper and deeper and deeper and the deeper you go the more modern it is it's very interesting um the most like like so basically the most recent shit is all the all the way at the bottom and people for some reason don't go down there so she goes down there and she discovers the truth and it won't spoil you uh, what the truth is, but she eventually figures out what that event was, and we're gonna find out what I am gonna tell you is the event. 
Uh, and what that relates to with the 2008 financial crisis that I didn't talk about yet. I'm saving that. That's a big M. Night Shyamalan twist. Uh, the memories are, are their former lives, as you probably can guess right now. You know, the memories uh, relate to the real world as the former lives before the financial crash and everyone lost their jobs. Um, without the memories of their past, the people of Paradigm have to start new lives. The memories of the real world version of people's past due to economic recession, they can't go back to. Their former lives, as, as in their jobs, uh, and therefore past lives have been wiped away. The event in, Par in Big O caused a financial crisis and thus the beginning of the Great Recession, which is exactly what happened because of the financial crisis, the housing market. Something happened in the past that caused everyone to lose their former lives, their past. People had to move to cheaper living conditions or states in, in the real world um, where the cost of living was cheaper. You see it here all the time, especially if you live in the north. Everyone moves south. In Jersey, everyone moves to North Carolina, Florida, or South Carolina to get a fucking a cheaper spot. Ah, oh, how did I not read this? Uh, they literally. Oh no, I did read that. Sorry. Um, they always are moving to just cheaper places because they can't afford it. You know what I'm saying? Because, you know, so on and so forth. So, um, they had to downsize their. Uh, People had to move to cheaper living conditions or states where their, the cost of living was cheaper. They had to downsize uh, the size of their homes to adjust to the, to the new wages because of the new jobs that they've gotten. They, uh, they um, had to find a, uh, wait, return, back to, re return back to school to get an education in, in a different industry. You know, you had, I, I know plenty of people who are, at the time were 45 who were going back to college just to get degrees in other fields that were more secure um uh people had to change their schools because they were they moved away to different you know like because of because they couldn't afford it where they originally were um they had to move away from friends and family and co-workers all of this combined is a complete restart of your life i mean think about it if you move away from all of your friends if you move away if you don't have the same job if you don't live in the same place. You're, you know, you're up your, your life. If you just move some somewhere completely different, and, and every part of your life is completely different, it's kind of that whole like idea of, you know, how many, like it's like a wooden boat. How many, how many boards need to be replaced before it's a new boat? You know what I'm saying? Like if you have a boat and you replace one of the boards, yeah, it's still the same boat. But what if you replace all the boards? Is it still the same boat? You know what I'm saying? Like, but but over time, you know, like. Well, every week. Oh shit! There's a, this board is fucked up. Okay, put a new board there. Oh shit! This board's all fucked up. You know, put this here. And eventually, you're like, this isn't the same. This, none, none of this like uh, material that's making up my boat is the same. The original material when I first bought the boat. So it's essentially like a brand new boat. That's the thing. When does you know? When is when is it their new life after ha after having so many changes happen in your life? Eventually, when does it become a brand new life? You know what I'm saying? So it's an interesting kind of thought, if you will. Um, Gordon Rosewater now. We're talking about him. Gordon Rosewater is the man, if you don't remember, he's the man in Big O who created the domes. Uh, he is believed to have, a, uh, have, have his memories. He's believed to remember shit. Um, and he's he knows a lot of shit about the past that... Some people don't know about. He's a wealth of knowledge, but he speaks in cryptic codes where it's so cryptic people think that he is um, del like delirious. You know what I'm saying? He's, del he's del like his dementia. You know, like he's just a senile old man. Um, but it's very interesting. Uh, he relates to the real world version of the retired founders of these mortgage companies, these banks that would give out the mortgages. Uh, the old way. Um, he, he represents the old way of how the world used to work as in um, you know with only with prime mortgage lending this means prime mortgage lending if you don't remember is people who you have good credit you have a good job you have a way to pay that back this uh, mortgage okay we're gonna give you a, a mortgage you don't have a way to pay back this mortgage we're not gonna give it to you you know what I'm saying so that was the original way to do it and it was very structurally sound because of that you know what I'm saying because you could pay back your, your mortgage that was good, you know. Yes, we were only getting a little bit of interest off of that. We weren't getting, uh, we weren't, didn't have a lot of people who, um, uh, what's it called, who, who were given mortgages, you know, out to. But at the same time, at that point, the Federal Reserve did not cap 
interest rates. So we could increase the interest rates because if you remember from the beginning, the Federal Reserve, before all this happened, capped interest rates at 1%. So these banks before that were like, we can charge 30% interest. We're making a shit ton of money. We don't need to worry about doing anything else. This is all fine. We're getting a bunch of money right here. Don't need to worry about nothing else. And then when the interest rates were capped at 1%, which is very low, everyone went, all right, we need to find other ways to make money because we've lost like, I'm just making up numbers. Let's say we lost 60% of our revenue because, you know, we went from fucking 60%, 61% uh, interest rates to to, to 1%. You know what I'm saying? So they were like, we just need to make money. So um, Alex Rosewater, which is his son, who now runs Paradigm City in Big O, uh, here we go. Um, Alex Rosewater represents the mortgage broker who's concerned with making money. The mortgage broker is the person you go to at the banks, the Wells Fargo's, who gives you the mortgage. These are the people that were giving getting bonuses to give out mortgages, and also they were giving out the subprime mortgages. Uh, loan shark shit. That's exactly it. Damn. 60% is insane. Yeah, right. It really is. 60%. Yeah, right. More that I get more, I get most of this. You only get 40%. I get most of all, you know, like it's crazy. But, uh, but yeah, so Alex Rosewater represents the new way that the mortgage industry works at this point. Um, and, and his, his personality is, is to a T exactly like that. He, he looks to be helping the lower class families by giving them mortgages, um, on homes, you know, like, oh, these, these poor people, they want a mortgage and normally we wouldn't give it to them, but now we're able to give it to them. What's wrong with that? It sounds great on paper. It sounds like you're helping them. It sounds like you're giving them something good, but you're giving them something that they can't pay you back on. So you're fucking them over at the end of the day. At the end of the day, they're going to lose the house you gave them anyway. So it's this, they're back to not having the house, but now they also have debt and fuck credit even worse. You know what I mean? So it's like, you're really not helping them out. It sounds like it, but you're not. We're giving them houses. What's wrong with that? Because you're taking it away. So, um, bah, 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 bah. Uh, um, he's giving, uh, uh, he's helping lower, cl- uh, he looks to be helping lower class families by giving them mortgages on homes, but in reality, he's just making money off their debt they will soon incur. This is shown when the angel, which is a satellite, um, it's falling uh, from the sky and is expected to hit outside the domes uh, where the lower class uh, citizens live. And his quote is, if this is their destiny, who am I to defy it? Meaning if they're meant to get cr- like, cause someone, someone asks him, Roger asks him, sorry, Roger. Oops. There we go. Roger asks uh, Alex Rosewater. Why aren't you evacuating the people of paradigm city? Don't you care about them? And he goes, well, if it's their, Destiny, who am I to uh, to defy it? And I'm gonna show you that clip right the fuck now. How about that? Uh, where is it? Direct, Arch Smith, the event. I guess. Yeah, well, you, can, you can read. There's subtitles right down there, goddammit. There it is. So, there you go. So there's that. Yeah, man, I went hard with this. I got all the fucking the details. So, uh, this is the exact same attitude that companies had for people who did not have the means of paying uh, for the loans. The subprime mortgages. Um... Uh, if they don't, and basically the, the mentality for these mortgage brokers, the people who are giving out mortgages, their, their mentality was, if they don't want this house, or sorry, if they, if they want this house and can't afford it, it's not my problem. You know, the mortgage brokers were like, you're the one fucking taking out this mortgage. You should be paying attention to what you're signing. You know, you're over here fucking signing out a house. How the fuck do you think you're going to pay a $2.1 million house working at McDonald's? That's your fault, stupid. It's, they kind of, they're not blameless. You, you got to be retarded and th- to think that you can do this. But these these mortgage brokers were also encouraging these people to take out these mortgages. They're like, oh, no, no, you can do it. We have these these methods. You know, we have these these uh, these these ways to to solve this. You know, look, dude, we got things like 
right up here. Uh, where is it? Uh, right down here. Um, predatory uh, under predatory loan uh, lending practices. We have this thing called adjustable rate mortgages. No, no, no. As long you know, it, the the rate fluctuates. It's a very loose rate. You know, they would say shit like that. Um, I'm just speculating, by the way. I don't know exactly what they would say, but um, that's a that's an example of how you could get somebody in to sign things. And these people were incentivized to to uh, you know um, give out. Uh, mortgages because as I said they were getting bonuses you know the Alex Rosewaters were getting bonuses for giving out um, mortgages so Alex Rosewaters greed and power lust is shown in episode 21 where because of his actions and knowledge that Big Fow which is his mega deuce uh, I'll pull it up right here for you guys um, So we'll watch this first. I'll explain it afterwards. So basically, his his big foul is his big robot, and you're only gonna see his. Big, this is his big robot right here that he can't operate. There it is. And all that this robot is doing is destroying the city, and he's not in control of it because it's it's just gotten too crazy. Dominus means your driver. What? Some badass looking beast. Big O's sick. If you like giant mech shit, it's fucking sick. But you can see, because of his actions, this happened. Brandy goes. There is no way y'all motherfuckers are still alive. That's right, bitch. You better fucking believe it. So sit down and shut the fuck up. Class is already in session. Big O. Roger's coming back. Thank you. There's that big O. That guy's a motherfucker. All right, cool. So, we're still talking about Alex Rosewater. Um, Alex Rosewater's greed and power lust is shown in episode 21, which you guys just saw, where... Uh, the actions and knowledge that uh, were because of his actions and knowledge that Big Fow, which is the robot he was controlling, um, was not ready to be used. The the Mega Deuce, his robot, destroys par the Paradigm Dome. That's the one dome. As I said, there's multiple domes that create the city. Um, but his robot destroys the Paradigm Dome, causing massive damage to the city and the economy. So... Just like the, these mortgage brokers who were giving out all these loans to people, <laughs> he, my boy Brand Rex, yes sir. But um, because just like these mortgage brokers that were giving out all these loans to people, um, and and essentially their actions got the best of them, and they couldn't control what they caused, and therefore the what they what they started, you know, what they were in control of that now got that now is in control of itself, you know, it's, it's they can't stop it now has destroyed the economy. You know what I'm saying? It's the same thing as like th these bad mortgages that they, they've been putting out has ruined the economy. You know, they can't stop it. Same thing with that, with that robot. Uh, here we go, guys. Here is the big one. This is, this is the, big, the big spoiler reveal. If you remember from the beginning and halfway through, I was talking about how in Big O, there was the event that happened 40 years ago, 40, that caused everyone to lose their memories and, and completely ruin like everything, like society and, and the economy and, and you know the infrastructure and, and everything was fucked. The real world uh, equivalent of that in, in the real in, in life is 9/11. I kid you not. C's birthday. 9/11 is the event. The real world version of the event that happened in in Big O that caused all of this to happen. And I'm going to show you why. Right now. 9-11 is the reason that we were able to have the 2008 financial crisis happen. Basically, it's, the, it's, it's what allowed that perfect storm to happen. Here we go. So, 
me pull this up for you guys. So, here is uh, Investopedia.com. How September 11th affected the U.S. stock market. Uh, I'm not going to go over it too much, but basically, uh, blah, blah, that happened um, after the, the terrorist attack. Uh, it marked a sharp negative reaction by the stock market the first week of trading after the attacks. So, uh, this is a... a so uh, it's, a, it's a marker for how the stock market is doing. Fall more than 14%, marking a record one-day drop at the time while gold and oil rallied. The largest industries impacted were the airlines, blah, blah. Ultimately, the market rebounded af after just a relatively short sell-off, but the lasting effects of 9-11 still linger. Let me show you what it looked like. Uh, this is... Stock exchange closed between September 10th, 2001 and September 17th, 2001. After the initial panic, the, uh, the Dow Jones index quickly rose for us uh, for only a slight drop. So you can see it went down and, and it kind of came back up. But you, you, know, you can see that, that September 11th did have some economic serious stress. Um, and more importantly, here we are. This is it. Now, I know what you're saying. You're saying, Keith, it doesn't sound like... 9-11 did that much to the economy. It sounds like it came back. The graph you just showed me, it came back. And you are right. And this is the big one. This is, remember how I was talking about how that interest rate locked everybody in? And, and basically the interest rate that being stuck at 1% is what made banks want to give more loans out to people because if you remember at first they can, the, the interest rates, they could, be, they could be like, hey, you know what, we'll give you $100. And you know what? You owe me 5% every month. You owe me 5% of $100. So, and, and, and you still owe me the $100, but every week you don't pay me, it's another $5 on top of that, 5%. That, then they'd be like, okay, we don't need to give out a lot of loans because, or a lot of mortgages because we have a, a lot of interest coming back. You know what I'm saying? Like, so, so on, on the mortgages that we do have. So, that's that was fine but because the interest rates were locked at one percent which is very very low they were like we're not making a lot of money we got to do dangerous things we got to do different things instead of having really good interest coming in on a, a, a small amount a small amount of quantity wise of loans we're gonna do a large quantity of loans that the quality is shit you know what i'm saying it's the whole good quality small quantity you know good a lot of qual a quantity low quality I, that probably just confused everybody, but we're going to go from here. Uh, let me just check. Everyone's good. Okay, no questions. Good. So, if you look right here. How September 11th, uh, the attacks destroyed the U.S. interest rates. Um, and this is the first one right here. The Fed cuts rates. This is what I talked about originally, and I'm going to talk about it again. The major national events, uh, whether positive or, tra or tragic, um, affect the U.S. economy and markets significantly. Already in a recession as a result of the dot-com bubble, and there it is, guys. There's the other part of it. The event that happened in Paradigm, in Paradigm City, in Big O, in the anime, was the real-world version of the dot-com bubble bursting, followed by, in 2001, 9-11. And I'm going to explain that in one second. But already in a recession as a result of the dot-com bubble in America... Uh, this is some guy, he, he was in charge. He sought to combat further economic slowing after September 11th attacks. The Federal Reserve began a series of interest rate cuts beginning on September 17th, 2001, which made it increasingly cheaper to borrow money. Americans started taking on more and more debt as a result. Basically, the economy works where if money is being traded, if goods and services are being bought, that is good for the economy. They wanted to lower interest rates because then people will go, oh shit, I can borrow a lot more money and spend it on things because guess what? If I, you know, I, I don't, I'm not accruing a lot of interest. You know what I'm saying? Like if the way that I would look at it is like, if I'm, if I'm, you know, uh, borrowing a hundred dollars and before I used to have to spend $25 every single week that I didn't pay that back in, in full, then I, you know, I would, at that point I'd say, fuck that. But if it goes all the way down to, I only owe a dollar every week, I'd be like, fuck that shit. Yeah, this is, a, I'm, I'm more likely to, to now want to, you know, um, take on that risk because that risk is so low because the interest rate is so low. Um, cool. 
So, oh, oh, wait, okay, there it is. Sorry, I just got rid of that, uh, this page for a second. Uh, I thought you guys couldn't see it for a second. So anyway, so because of 9-11, the Federal Reserve panicked and cut interest rates to try to encourage people to, um, to spend money, to borrow money and spend money. Um, and as we go back to this, the event that happened 40 years ago is 9-11. The event in real life caused the Fed to cut interest rates to encourage people to borrow money and take out debt. This soon led to the financial crisis in 2008. Just like in, uh, let me switch to this because I think we're done. Yeah, it talks about the credit bubble burst uh, as well. But anyway, let's get back to this because we're, we're just about done here, guys. Uh, where is it? Uh, this event in real life, 9-11, caused uh, the Fed to cut interest rates and encourage pe to encourage people to borrow money and take out debt. This soon led to the financial crisis in 2008. Just like in Big O, the event 40 years ago led to a breakdown in the economy, the job market, and a wider wealth divide between those in the domes and, and outside the domes. Just like how some mortgage brokers actually made money from the collapse of the, of the economy and those who lost, and, and there were also those of, of the people, the citizens who lost everything because of it. So, as you can see, I think that this pre explains everything very well. To talk about the dot com bubble very shortly in in the nineties, the internet was popping off. Everyone was like, "Damn, I got my AOL uh, online fucking CDs where I can go on I can go on the internet for twenty uh, hours. You know, that's cool for free." Um, and basically, anybody in the tech industry who had any presence online people were like invest 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 even if they had no business model they didn't do shit literally i could have been like i, I bought a website i bought a domain name off godaddy.com and they'd be like oh, invest in that company that sounds great they're online it's amazing and then people eventually went wait a second these people aren't doing anything. They're not creating anything. They they have no business model. They have no idea of like what their future is. Um like like this this company is, is just bullshit. It's all lies. What the fuck? Why are we investing in this? So people because of this it caused a dot com bubble burst. Like and and basically everybody who is in the tech industry now could not get any money. No one would invest in the tech industry because they all thought that they were all scams. You know, no one knew who had to decipher good tech companies from bad tech companies. Um, so believe it or not, yeah, in the nineties, uh, it's it was pretty fucked up. Uh, well, Volt, you see their their business model is existing. Well, you see, I have an on I have a website. I make money. Duh. Literally, you know what it is? It's the real world equivalent of, I'm pulling this up. Just to show you what the dot com bubble is exactly. Um, this is exactly what it was. Let me, oh. Oh, this is really quiet. Oh, that's why. You don't back. I don't get it. Lufu. Phase one, collect underpants. Phase two. Phase three, profit. Oh, I get it. No, you don't, fat ass. <laughs> I love that. That is all it is. I don't get it. Lufu. Phase one, collect underpants. Phase, Phase one. Two. How? Be online. Phase three, profit. And Phase two. And then we make the money. No, you don't, fat ass. That is literally it to a T, though. All right, Eggs goes. Um, love my stuff. It's not like you can do research like with any other company or anything. Yeah. Oh wait, they could have exactly, exactly nailed it. Investors are stupid. Trust me, especially with the internet. The, the people didn't even understand what the fuck the internet was at the time because they were all just old fogies who were like, oh, like boomers still don't know what the fuck the internet is. They don't know how to restart a computer. They don't know how to. They don't. They go, where's the internet? Where's the internet button? How do I get on? How do I get on the line? Dude, it's 2020. If you don't know how to fucking turn your computer on, and if you, uh, I swear to God, if you don't know how to fucking get online, and, and if you're still typing www, fuck you. This is what I'm saying. And so, of course, in the 90s, they were even worse. So, anyway, so with that being said, uh, bye bye. Oh, yeah, I already talked about all those notes. So, so the, dot, the dot com bubble burst. 
we were already in a recession because of that, because, you know, shit went south. The tech industry was totally fucked because, like I said, no one was investing in the tech industry at all. People were like, you know what? Maybe it's not a good idea. And, and if you think about it, tech, technology, we are, we were right at the beginning of turning into a technology based economy you know right now we are so like so everything's online everything is based on tech you know when the new iphone comes out the economy gets a, a boost like these are important things um in, in the world that we live in today and that and we were becoming the world that we are today back then and he goes do you think we'll ever uh be like that uh and if i if i've had if i had computer class uh teachers do that bullshit and i've had computer class yeah exactly right Ugh. i don't think that we'll be like that i think that um I think that we're so used to finding information ourselves and not being told it. You know, like these boomers were ba were were, uh, were born in a generation where they were just told what to do. They had a really easy life. Honestly, the boomer generation had a great life. It was economic, uh, you know, great times. No real hardships. You know, what I'm saying to to really speak of. They had a lot of great moments. It was a, it was you know, literally they were buying. There's if you talk to a, a lot of boomers, a lot of them bought houses they bought houses at 20 they flipped houses they bought they got into businesses everyone like there were more jobs than there were people so jobs were like please work for me now everyone is like please let me work for your job because there's less jobs and more people looking for jobs so the boomer generation really was spoiled and when they actually needed to fucking get serious they flopped they sucked ass. They don't know what to do. They've, they've completely sucked off all the money that we've uh, invested in a system, uh, you know, to help, you know, uh, uh, our citizens. You know, what I'm saying with, with social things like social security, so on and so forth. Um, they they just they're lazy. They don't contribute to fucking anything. They a bunch of them. They are they are. I'm don't I'm, don't quote me on this, but I'm gonna t say I believe and I know I'm right. You know what? You can quote me on this. I am right. They are the largest. Um, they, they have the largest percentage in their generation of people who are inept in our current society, in our, in our current technological society. They can't do shit, and they don't want to do shit. Dude, they had, fuck, to understand the computer, they had from 95, Windows 95, I'll give them then, to fucking now, to learn the computer. And a bunch of them still don't fucking learn it. Because you know what they went, they said? They went, eh, I'm not going to need to learn this. I'll just keep doing what I'm doing. I already am set up. I already have a career. There's no way I'm going to need to fucking uproot and change my career. There's no way my career is going to change in any way where I'm going to have to essentially use technology to benefit you know or to, to do my job there's no way i'm gonna just do what i'm gonna do because i don't want to learn anything new fuck that and and then they saw fucking the 2000s come around the early 2000s up until 2010 and how like oh wow technology is really really important and online banking is a thing now and and everything is like you know important like on, online and technology and they still didn't learn it and then fucking 2010 to 2020 comes up and they still don't fucking learn it when literally understand not understanding a computer now is mind-boggling and and so like i said with these people they fucking are lazy pieces of shit they're a shitty generation of people um uh, which is why I don't think that we're going to become that because we were born into a fucked system because of their negligence. I really truly believe, Eggs, that you and I and our generation as a whole will not be as shitty as the boomer generation. Truly, I really believe it. We were forced. It's the whole saying is hard, uh, tough men create easy times. Easy times create weak men. Weak men create hard times. So on and so forth. Eggs goes, uh, we still suck at it. People just want to get mad at us like they did any like they did any better exactly you're exactly right yeah we learn a lot more uh and shit our problem is a lot of us actually don't want to fucking hustle oh you're exactly right i mean our generation has its own problems we are highly narcissistic i, I mean totally serious you know like we are so obsessed with ourselves we have we have such an entitlement like we think that we are deserve the world it's a whole crazy thing but um yeah it's fucking crazy out there uh, I don't know if I'm gonna keep this in the uh, in the YouTube video, but if I do, thanks for watching that, guys. That's the the story. I hope everybody liked it. Uh, everybody liked the the. I, I did a lot of research on this. I actually posted all my my notes in uh, in the Discord, which everyone should be part of my Discord. It's uh, on screen right now, and uh, I probably will put it in the YouTube dis uh, description. But.